tell me about how you approach integrating new brands into your existing company. Well, the first thing that I would say is this kind of goes back to a point that I mentioned a little while ago, which is don't acquire a hundred or 200 companies within a year or two years or something like that. Uh, without knowing exactly who you're talking about, I would say that that is a really, really, it just creates such integration nightmares and makes it so challenging to actually integrate the brands that you're acquiring. Acquiring so many is, is a big, big challenge. At Society, we've done 12 acquisitions within like two and a half years. They've been bigger acquisitions and we've focused, we've obsessed with integrating them in. So our financial reporting packages at Society are very clean, has all of our brands, it has all the performance data on all of our brands. And then also when we go to log into our, to our technology platform, we were able to clearly uh, measure everything on, on, at a brand level. So on a consolidated basis, but also on a brand level as well. So you don't necessarily need to change everything post acquisition, but there's really a few key things that an acquirer needs to integrate. You've got to uh, integrate the back office and finances. You've got to uh, integrate uh, demand planning is generally something that's, that uh, you can integrate in. Now, a few things that, that you don't necessarily have to do is change every single operating infrastructure that a brand does to be successful. So with society, since we underwrite true EBITDA, and since the brands that we're acquiring are growing year over year, there is a philosophy of it's, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Because if a brand's growing 30, 40% year over year, and if all they do is continue to keep on growing 30 or 40% year over year post acquisition, regardless of the value that society brings post acquisition, that's still a really solid outcome. Most of the time that comes with a great founder that really, really has a, a, an understanding of what their customer wants. And that's beneficial to us because at society, we have a product development team and that founder can, can communicate and work with our product development team on new product launches since they have a really clear vision for what their consumers want. And then it also oftentimes comes with some level of the infrastructure. On the Amazon FBA side, maybe less. Maybe uh, there's a few uh, VAs that, uh, that a brand founder has. On the direct-to-consumer side, it's, it generally has more, it has more team members. So when we do an acquisition, it's not uncommon for that founder to have 20 or 30 employees. So they have real infrastructure there. They have real team members, they have systems, they have processes, they have a marketing team, right? They have very different operations teams. And, and we like to help those team members. We integrate what we need to, which is the financial, we integrate into technology. And then demand planning is almost always the case. And then what we do at Society is we look for uh, gaps in the system that we could add value. But replacing what that founder and those team members do isn't necessarily our thesis. If you're going to rip, rip and replace, it creates a lot of risk for that acquisition in our opinion. 